Welcome to the Utah Street Bander Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another episode here on the Utah Street Banter. I'm Cody. Like always, uh, with me is Elijah. What's up, man? Not much. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. We're, like, live, so yeah. that's yeah. that's legit. I know. Yeah. We're big time. Hello, everyone. We're big time. Yeah, I mean, and next thing, we're probably going to be, like, on ESPN or something. Yeah. No, like Pat I, McAfee. I, I, nah, that's kind of, I'm, I'm more thinking just, like, we're our own sports network. Oh, it's shoot. better than ESPN. Right. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna buy Disney one day. Buy Disney. <laughs> yeah. I and right now it's probably not a good time. They're not they're, their stock's not doing that great. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're gonna we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna come in and rescue swoop in. It's gonna be a Utah Street Banter Floss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> we um we've actually had one heck of a week when it comes to the Orioles, right? We've yeah, we've been to a few games. You've been to two? I've been to two, yeah. I gotta I, go to two, luckily. Yeah, I went to one. We'll get into it a little bit more later. Um, and, um, yeah, man, we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I guess we can go ahead and get started, uh, with our box scores. Um, man, it's been like an up and down kind of week for me, like, sure you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So last week on, was it Tuesday, right? Uh, the Orioles. Wednesday. Wednesday. Tuesday was the rain delay. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Last week on Wednesday, uh, the Orioles played the Blue Jays, um, Kyle Bradish got that start, and he went against um, Kikuchi. You say Kikuchi. You say Kikuchi, right? Um, he didn't do terrible. The only issue that he's having is um, it just seems like he, he's not getting very far in games. Yeah. Right? So, I um, anyway, so, yeah, so the Orioles won 3-2. to two. Kyle Bradish got the start against Kikuchi. Um, neither got the win or the loss. Uh, Danny Coulomb got the win, and Romano, uh, the uh, Blue Jays closer, got the loss. Yeah, it was— um. I was there. It was an interesting game. I was afraid it was going to get rained out because the game before got rain delayed, canceled, and uh, it was raining basically the whole drive up there. Luckily, it was just a little bit of drizzle. Um, it was field trip day at Camden Yards. Oh, so there were you was one of the oldest people. Uh, there? Five million little kids running around. <laughs> it was it was great, but um, the entire upper deck was filled with field with schools. It was there was I think eighty ninety schools there. I was great. They were cheering a lot, brought energy. And think, once they left, the energy was gone. Think of how many hot dogs they sold that day. I, they made a mess of money. I guarantee <laughs> it. But um, yeah, it was a good game. I mean, start off the best you can with uh, Westberg had. Well, here, this is where I'll start. Bradish had a really good, efficient first inning. I think he threw maybe ten pitches. Right. Which is, I mean, you say okay, whatever. I mean, he's going against George Springer, Vladdy Guerrero Jr., and I think it was Bobuchet. I'm not 100 right. percent sure. But um, that's I mean it's pretty good. A few people to face and yeah, he did really good. And then Kowser comes out and didn't look great at the first couple pitches or not Kowser Westberg sorry, right? And uh crushes a ball near the scoreboard for a home run, and I'm sitting there. I was like, well, I guess it doesn't matter who's batting lead off. They're gonna hit a home run. But um, the one thing I would like to say, I know I was texting you about it before the game started. I'm really ha- I was really happy to see that that day, because the Orioles offense as we said in the last podcast, was struggling. Mm. And we changed some stuff up. Obviously, we didn't score a lot of runs, but putting Westbrook, someone who was hot at the time at the top with Westbrook, uh, what Henderson struggling, it was really nice to see. And obviously, he took advantage of it. Yeah, I um, the problem I was really nervous about was because of the rain out, this was actually turned into a two-game series, um, which really sucked because if we had lost, we would have lost our, yeah. our streak. Our winning streak. Series right? Series unswept streak. Thank you. Yeah, whatever yeah. that's called. But, um, no, it was really cool, and I have a fun fact for you. Oh, fun. I did better be fun, dude. Board. Yeah, so Jordan Westberg, he, uh, this was his first ever leadoff at bat, right? Right. And he had a home run. Yeah. He is the first Orioles player since who to do that? Oh. Let's just say Westberg draws a lot of player comps to this player. J.J. Hardy. J.J. Hardy. And 2013. Uh, not first career leadoff, first Orioles. For, okay. Because yeah. he came over from the Milwaukee. Was, Milwaukee, yeah, because he was with the Twins before that. And uh, that was his first leadoff at bat and hit a home run there, too, which is oh. interesting because I kind of see similarities in them, too. Yeah, yeah. The, the only difference is uh, Westbrook doesn't look like he's in pain every time he takes a set. That, that is very true. Westbrook can run. Yeah. He's Poor Hardy, man. He'll run around the bases. He, he'll, he'll look rough. <laughs> <laughs> and it got worse towards the end of there. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, that then it kind of just went downhill from there. We had a couple scoreless innings from Bradish and then. We had an interesting situation. We had two runners on and Boba shut up and he hits a crush the ball out to uh, right center. And Tony goes up almost against the wall and the ball goes off of his glove and hits, hits the ground for a double, two RBI double. That's the only run that the Blue Jays scored all game. 
and he kind of got hurt on that play too. He ended up playing through it. But like right now, I know he can't play the field. Right. And like he's Hyde's been coming out and talked about that. He's healthy enough to hit, but can't really run that well and stuff. So it's it's interesting to see. It definitely it almost kind of looked like the way he landed on it. He almost hyperextended his knee. So it's good to see that he didn't get too hurt. Right. But um, yeah, scary. I I don't know. You have Kowser out there, maybe Stowers. That's caught. But you know, we we obviously we came back. You see, we won that game because. Yet we didn't do anything for the whole game. We couldn't. We were terrible in runners in scoring position. I think right. we had like ten or eleven hits that game. Yeah. And the seventh and eighth inning both had two runners in scoring position and couldn't score any of them. Yeah, very frustrating. Uh, very frustrating game. But it doesn't matter when you have ninth inning come up. Westberg's first batter probably should have been an out, but gets a ground ball that takes a lucky hop past Isaiah Isaiah Kiner Falefa, yeah. the former Texas Ranger catcher. Uh, you didn't know that, did you? I didn't. Yeah, he used to catch. He got me. I didn't know that. Because how about this? How did he get to the Yankees? Like, I know he's on the Blue Jays now, but do you know how he get there? No. He got traded for Mitch Garver to the Twins, and then maybe like two days later, he got traded for Gary Sanchez, I think, to the Yankees. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. I just know plenty of stuff. But um, if you just... So he took, took a bad hop, he got in there, and then it didn't matter anyway, because Adley... Should have popped out. The swing was not even a great swing, I will say, but he's just too good. But he's just, and put put it onto the porch. Yeah, thank and, God for Camden Yards. Yeah, uh, I mean, or Yankee Stadium. Yeah, we, I always like to talk about the benches there. That's a third row home run, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yankee Stadium you know? is like sort of like a, just a little bit bigger than like the Little League Major League Park. Yeah. 200 foot. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it was a great game to be at. Walk-offs are always fun. I can't. I don't know if I've ever seen a walk off before in a baseball game. It was awesome. Yeah, you have. I think you're like six. Uh, well, Taylor yeah. Tea Garden. Taylor Tea Garden. Taylor Tea Garden, Garden had a walk off. Um, I remember. I, I was with you. You were little. Well, that's probably why I don't remember it then. Yeah. Prince Fielder was on that team. Prince. We were against the Tigers. Yeah. Prince Fielder was. Uh, wow, man. All right, we're going off a tangent. <laughs> we'll come back. So, well, um, yeah, the Adley walk off. That was his fourth home run in three games. He's finding the power stroke from the left side. That's all I like to see. And um, he's just becoming what he is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, and then luckily, we moved to the next game, which we both were at. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, really enjoyed that game. That was Friday night, right? Um, the Seattle Mariners came into town. I was super excited to see uh, Julio Rodriguez. Uh, I shouldn't have been because my man robbed uh, Tony Taters. That was, um, that was impressive. One of the better catches you'll see, I'll be honest with you. Um, but anyway, uh, John Means started this game. I was really excited to see him against Bryce Miller. Um, I was excited to see Bryce Miller too. Um, as Elijah knows, I had Bryce Miller starting in my fantasy team. I had John Means starting, so who who had the better pitcher? Uh, not me. Hey, but guess what? I lost and he won, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, well, John Means went uh, six innings, uh, gave up two, earned um, four strikeouts. Not bad. Not a bad game, right? Uh, Bryce Miller, on the other hand, excuse me. Um, Bryce Miller, on the other hand, um, gave up five runs for four earned um, and five and a piece. Um, Bryce Miller is really good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's a, he's a good pitcher. Their entire rotations and amazing. the Orioles. I, I don't know if somebody just ticked them off or something because everybody like came ready to go. The crowd was crazy. Everybody. Um, let, let's put it this way: Me and Cody went to Game One of the ALDS last year. Yeah. And that's the only game I've been to that have more people yeah, than the playing game not, on Friday. Yeah, yeah. There, I think there was um, – actually, I think I should have it right here. Uh, there 38. were 38,882. Yeah. I mean, it, that was – And they, yeah. and you got your jer- – yeah, we got our jerseys. Man, 70th yeah. anniversary celebration. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean um, – so, anyway, it was a fun day. It was yeah, fun. it was really great. And, I mean, we started off pretty bad. Rough first inning from Means. Uh, but it doesn't matter when you have Gunnar Henderson who – doesn't yeah, just it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Pay him what as Cody said, pay him whatever he wants. I don't know what he wants. Uh it doesn't matter though. Uh David Rubenside's rich. Sell the Magna Carta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get this. Yeah. But um for I mean, home run, center field, it was great. And then they just piled it on two singles after that. Then they had the Mount Castle with then error, but it doesn't matter. Then Kowser hit a nice double. Yeah. Which got I think that's what snapped him out of his slump that he's been in. Um, but like you said, Bryce Miller's good. And after that five run, uh, first inning, we had nothing against him. Yeah. Yeah. Then their bullpen came in, kind but, of um, shut us down. Yeah. Well, until the seventh. Yeah. When, uh, let's, let's look at this. You think this is a good line of events? So, uh, Jorge Mateo, triple. Gunnar Henderson. Oh, that was triple. Awesome. Yeah. Adley Rutschman, double. Austin A's pinch hit double. Is that, is that pretty good? That was awesome. No, dude, when, uh, if you weren't there, when Adley was rounding, uh, second, like, well, not rounding second, but he was almost a second. 
Everybody's yelling three. Yeah. He's been blown. He would have been blown oh, away. He, he like, would have been three steps off second base. I mean, but people wanted to see him try. Can yeah. we get three triples in a row? Yeah. No, that's what, I mean, it was impressive because Dunner shouldn't have been a triple at all. Yeah. He liked that out. And uh, I would just like to say, um, I don't know how Austin Hayes has been doing like per at bat lately, but the two games I went to, he was two for two with two doubles. So Austin, if you want to keep up that hot streak, you want to buy me a few tickets, I'll, I'll be one. I know you're out there somewhere. Right, right. Dude, kind of love it. But um, yeah, mean like you said, means didn't do great, but didn't do terrible. Had a solid. Time. If we could get six innings, two runs from means, that's that's a good day. I agree. But um, uh, and then we'll talk about it later. But this may have been the last uh, Michael Bauman appearance. I think so. I think so. But uh, now we'll get sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, come um Saturday, the Orioles obviously are in the middle of their series with the Mariners. Um, we have Grayson Rodriguez who. Pitched a heck of a game. Amazing. Amazing. Against Luis Castillo, um, who is also a good pitcher. The Mariners have, I mean, everybody, every starter they put out there. So. Yeah, I actually, uh, Mariners are, I was looking up their stats, looking up this. They're top 10, basically, in any, any stat, from ERA to whip to batting average against, just basically anything. They're they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Grayson did great. I mean, um, gives up, go, go six, gives up one hit, um, seven strikeouts. His only big thing is he, he walked three. So, Which, that, yet again, f- first game off the IM. Yeah, I get it. I get, but that's why they, that's why he couldn't go anymore. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and it wasn't even a good hit. It was a little infield dribbler from Julio. Yeah. Right. And then, um, uh, obviously, um, Danny Coulomb comes in, gives up two. And then Albert Suarez comes in, gives up a hit. Keno comes in, gives up two. The the only issue I have, not issue, like, you want to get on hide about bullpen management, but that was our that was no, our all-star yeah. bullpen. Uh, this like, that, that I mean, this game is the one you're gonna have two or three times a year. It's you. you I didn't do anything wrong. No. He, we were winning. He went to the guys that are ninety five percent of the time good. This is that five percent, yeah. and it's just it's gonna. It's just unfortunate that our two best relievers both had their worst game of the year. Yeah. Seeing, yeah. If I if I would have said, hey, our bullpen gave up four. Here's the guys that pitched: Colum, Suarez, Cano, and Perez. It's you, Perez. Yeah, you would think Suarez, Perez, yeah. Perez, Perez probably gave up all four. Yeah. Perez did good. He went the longest. He went. Uh, he almost went yeah, two innings. He yeah, went, he got us uh, five outs. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't say good. He is the one that gave up. Cano, Cano left the game. That's true. Hard. That's true. That's he, true. He gave right. up the inheritance. You're right. I did. I did yeah. forget that. I did forget that. But um, yeah, offense didn't do great. I mean, we had a sacrifice in an RBI single early to get us the two runs. Gunner had a home run against Andres Munoz in the ninth with two outs. And this is what I I was talking to Cody about this before we came on here, and it's just something I want to talk about. So, Adley Rutschman, he struck out to end the game, right? And I, I tuned in. I didn't get to watch this game, but I watched that last at bat. And I, I had a realization that I'm sitting here, and it's been a terrible, it's been terrible to be an Orioles fan for so many years. And obviously, it's great now, but I don't think we can get too caught up on us. We're two get, we're two games behind the Yankees. Oh, we have the third best record of baseball. Oh no, we need to be number one. I, I see this Adley Rutschman at bat where he struck out. I, I was thinking if I had 50-50 shot, it's a home run here. There's no way in 2019 anybody's thinking that. <laughs> but there, half of Orioles fans are confident we're coming back from that game with two outs down to one in yeah. the ninth inning. Yeah. Which, that, that's just a credit to these guys that we can even leave. Yeah, I think that def- definitely the hard part about being an Orioles fan is we always look at, we're so used to looking at the glass half empty. Yeah, like like I uh, I do that the worst. Like I'm like, oh here we go, we're gonna lose ten. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Like because I've just I've lived. You said that last night. I've lived for thirty years, you know, like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like just up. Oh, let's we're, we're, when's this? I mean, we're gonna screw. Let, this up? Let's also be grateful because let's. So Cody's wearing his uh, Birdland Powerhouse shirt that he got many years ago, and this mm-hmm. is supposed to be our six best power hitters. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you name our six best hitters today? Maybe our our worst in that list is. Yeah. Austin Hayes or Maybe. Anthony Santander, Pedro Alvarez is on that track. <laughs> like that's what we were really good too. Dude, dude, yeah, and we and we used to talk like this is the glory years. And yeah. what what we won one playoff series. Yeah, yeah. we won one playoff. Yeah, we yeah. we swept or swept Detroit. I think. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, Detroit. Yeah, yeah. So Delman double. God, now now we're like, dude, we better we better make it to a World Series. Yeah, like like. Like that, back I, then, I feel like a Yankee fan. Back then, we were like, "Oh, we better just you. We better we make a wild card. We, we make a wild card, but this is the best year of my life. We above five hundred. <laughs> best year. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good point. That's like, just like we need it. Like, I, 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 it's not just Orioles fans. It's just me too. Yeah, like, there's times where I'm like, Dean Kramer gave up five runs. He, trade him. 
Tra- <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I last night, maybe not. I, I'll t- I'll get to that when we have that game. But yeah, with Cole Irvin and Sandy Randy Cole. Johnson. You mean? Yeah, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But um, we'll move on from that game. We lost it. Yeah, we, we, we we lost. We don't like talk about this. But we won. Yeah, we Sunday we came out. We uh did great. Um um George Curry, another amazing pitcher. Uh, pitched for the Mariners. Um, and we had God, who do we have? Oh yeah, Corbin Burns. Apparently, you know, with Corbin Burns pitches, we can't hit. Um, well, that changed. Finally. Against yeah. one of the best pitchers. Maybe. Against a great yeah. pitcher. Yeah, yeah. Luckily. Um, but anyway, everything kind of lined up how we needed it to. Yeah. Corbin gave us gave us six innings. He could only go six. You know why? He think he struck out 11. You know, like when you're striking that many people yeah. up. No, it's because this is, I. there's two Corbins that we'll see. Okay. This is our two Corbins. There's the Corbin that's going to go five to six innings, give up one or two to three runs probably. But get only three hits, but in two Ks maybe. Or there's this Corbin, 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 Corbin. Corbin. There's this, there's this Corbin. He's gonna go six innings, give up a run or two, give up seven hits, I believe it was, yeah. but give up quite a bit of hits. But then, oh, he struck out eleven. Yeah, with that, because yeah, yeah, unless you get absolutely filthy Corbin like opening day when he mm-hmm. gave up one hit and struck out eleven too. Yeah, it's just I, I'll take either one. He's so good. Yeah, I'll take either. One. I'm so grateful to have him. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, one of the big stories here um, was was definitely, well, we, you know, we have Gunnar hitting a home run, obviously, in, in the first, again, um, that was his 15th of the year. Uh, O'Hearn got his sixth of the year in the third, um, did great, you know, everything's good. But to me, the big story here was really at the end of the game when Kimbrell came in and was able to notch his ninth save of the season. Yeah. Uh, and he looked good. I mean, uh, the first batter, everybody don't like me, was nervous. I think uh, the first batter got to a full count, I believe. Um, but other than that, he got he came in for an inning, got two strikeouts. Um, really was thanking God that he got those two because it was the seven, eight, nine batter. So I really didn't want Julio Rodriguez to have to come back up. Yeah. You know, um, it's a perfect situation for him, I think. Yeah. Not a great. Not a great bomb of the offense. Just get him a nice, safe situation. Yeah. What I w- there's two things I want to take away from this game, other than just like Gunner being amazing. I think this is the Cedric Mullins game. Oh yeah. I'm hoping this is his breakout. He had two two singles, both were RBIs. Yeah. Uh, and he just did really good. Yeah, I think I'd be honest with you. Um, if since the last time we've talked, uh, I think the biggest thing that has happened is Hayes has come out a little bit. Yeah. Right. He's um hitting the ball a little bit better. We had two doubles this past week, um, with with limited at bats. Yeah. Right. So I mean, not bad. Uh, you have Mullins, who's in a deep slump. He's come out a little bit. Right. Um, Santander is still about there. I mean, but like he, yeah. I just said, he's hurt. Um, but the big news is that, and then um, even Stowers got a hit uh, the other night. Yeah. So it's one of those things where this week was up and down, kind of. But I will say we, we've seen some people starting to yeah. get it going. And then back to the pitching side, though, there's one more thing that we need to bring up, and that's it's kind of become a big problem in our bullpen. Jacob Webb, he was someone that when Kimbrell was struggling, people were asking him to be a closer. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's doing terrible, but he's done really bad in his last three appearances, including this past one. Th- these three runs that we gave up, two of them were him. Really? Uh, the game we went to on Friday night against the Mariners, he faced three batters, only got one out, and then had to come out of the game. Right. And then I he came in on Wednesday against the Blue Jays when I was there, and he walked three batters. Yeah, row. I was just happy that when he came in and, and had to get pulled, that I was getting a soft pretzel and I didn't have to watch that. Thank God. Yeah, don't, don't worry. I I was waiting in line for a chicken sandwich when Means had his best innings. Yeah, well, you should have stayed out there. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did right. But, yeah, I, you're right, though. You're right. We we definitely have to figure something out uh, on the bullpen side of it, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if anybody can hear that, but my dogs are running in and out, so gotta love Dick that. Dick and Remy, Dick and Remy, gotta love it. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I'm having a trade deadline. We yeah. got some man. Um, what's his name over uh, in Miami would be a great guy to get. Um, yeah. um. Are you talking about Tanner Scott? Tanner Scott, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's who you are. Or there's someone we're playing right now that I take. Ryan Hesley. Oh, Ryan Hesley, yeah, yeah. I agree. There's, there, I think it's just you got to wait till close to the deadline. To yeah, because they're going to want a lot right now. The only the only team that knows what they're doing is the Marlins. But the problem is everyone's asking for them, so they're probably going to be you know, a lot. But, well, Natalie, you know who else needs bullpen help? Everyone. New York. Everyone does. 
You know? Yeah, no, I will say it's uh it's rough. Um, I'm not a Yankees fan. Uh, there's one person on the Yankees I will root for. That's Clay Holmes, just because he's on my fantasy team, and he hadn't given up a single run, and then uh, gave up about three runs the other day against the I think it was the Rays or something like that. Yeah. Or no, it was against the Mariners. Uh, the Mariners were down four in the uh, ninth inning. Oh, yeah. Came back and ended up winning the game. Yeah. yeah, they scored all those runs against him. He got me negative seventeen points. Uh, I wasn't gonna win anyway, so, so it doesn't really matter. But you know. Mo- moving on, let's jump to Monday. Monday we played the Cardinals. We actually are in St. Louis. Uh, we're playing the Cardinals, who are not good at baseball uh, right now. Um, and they beat us. And so we, yeah, we yeah, stay, not yeah, say that. Yeah, no, but their their the record shows that they're. I mean, they got um, two maybe future Hall of Famers in Goldschmidt and Arenado. Um, luckily, they're not hitting very well right now. Uh, well, Goldschmidt's not. Arenado's yeah. doing fine. But um, man, this game sucked. Uh, I don't know a better way to say that. Dean Kramer pitched. Not good. Worst start of the year. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Gray pitch. Best start of the year. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean, I have, as you can see in our notes that we have here, I, my first line was just bad, bad, bad. Yeah. I don't know. We were over here celebrating my aunt and his wife's uh, birthday, and it was bad. It was real bad. Um, Dean Kramer, he looked really bad. Really bad. And he's been fighting a blister. It, I guess he's like, he keeps looking at it. I'm like, and I don't know if, if that's the problem. I yet again. Uh, how about this? Yeah, like That's you said, Kyle, we have plenty of pitchers. <laughs> this is my thing. How, have I not been talking about a lot? I don't know if you guys know, but I like Cole Irvin. I've been talking about him a lot. Why is he in the bullpen if Dean Kramer started? If, if there's any little bit of an injury, just set, there's he's going to hurt us more than he's going to help us. Yeah, and, and normally I am a Dean Kramer fan um, and a hater of – not a hater because I don't hate yeah. Irvin. I just don't believe it. Yeah. But – but I, you're right. I mean, I, what else is there? This to is do? the second game in a row. Yeah, and, and it's because the, the problem is, is when our offense isn't at its peak, we can't make up for it. When, when we're do, when our offense is grooving, it doesn't matter because we could score ten runs. Yeah. But also when you have well, Sonny Gray's a good pitcher. He was second in AL on uh, AL Cy Young last year, yeah. so it's pretty good. But he threw a no hitter into the fifth. That's ridiculous. Luckily, Gunnar Henderson. Because tell me how Gunnar Henderson hits a three run home run. And that broke up the no hitter. We had two runners on base. They both were on by errors. Yeah. Um, which takes me back to Gunner. Uh, he leads the league in homers. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. If he doesn't win an MVP, I don't know how. Yeah. He just has to keep it going, man. It's the 16th time of the year. He's yeah. leading the league right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's just. Yeah. I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. That's gonna be bad. I was just. <laughs> I was gonna be like. <laughs> Dude, Jack, you just said best shortstop of I know Orioles history. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo. We can't not, not yet. I got a lot of Kyrie stuff in this room. Yeah, no, not yet, not yet. But um, not yet. <laughs> look, if we re- like if we resign him, guys, I I don't. Appreciate no, I I'm kidding. I love. <laughs> I I never got to see Kyrie Irving play, so it's slightly different for me. I love Kyrie Irving. Yeah. I don't. I think it's hard, but also you got if Gunnar Henderson does this for 15, 20 years. Yeah, I, I mean he's never going to play as many games in a row as Cal. That's the one thing Cal always have, and Cal's always going to be the best. Mm-hmm. Like he was the best at the time. He was the good, but. We'll see. Gunner's the guy right now. Yeah. He is the guy right um, now. You're right. But yeah, no. So me and Cody were actually talking. He thought he was going to get me with this question earlier, but we went to St. Louis in, what was it, 2022? Yep. To watch the Orioles play the Cardinals. And it was actually interesting that we got to see Kyle Bradish's first win as an Oriole. First win in the MLB. And, and we yeah. thought we were so disappointed in the pitching lineup that was coming through. Yeah. Because it was Kyle Bradish, who we didn't really know much about, against uh, Packy. Packy Naughton. Pa- Packy Naughton. Which uh, we only remember that name because... His name's Packy <laughs> Naughton. <laughs> like... I'm actually, I'm trying to look up his stats right now. I want to know when the last time he played Major League. Practice. I don't know. But uh, the big thing about that was um, it's really when the Orioles started turning around, um, then you know, around that time. Um, but we did get to see Yachty play. That was kind of yeah. cool. And um, I got to see Albert Poles uh, stand in the dugout. Because of course he didn't play. Hey, don't worry, I went to Anaheim and saw him, Otani, and Trout all hit a home run, home runs in the same game against the Orioles. Yeah, oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is Packy Naughton's career stats: uh, four nine eighty ERA and fifty nine innings. He hasn't pitched since twenty twenty three. Since uh, in twenty twenty two, when he he, faced the Orioles. he he threw five innings in twenty twenty three. Yeah, poor Packy. Hey, he had zero ERA though. He he is like a six ERA in the minors this year though. I don't know. Is he who's he on? What team? He's still with Cardinals. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So I mean. Anyway, I'm so hopefully um, Tuesday uh, night or Tuesday, yeah, well, Tuesday night. Yeah, the uh, Orioles are uh, played the Cardinals. 
And uh, that game uh, we will go over next week on the podcast. And, of course, Kyle Bradish, the reason I brought that up is Kyle Bradish is pitching that game also. So we shall see yeah. how that goes. And then I have uh, some notes here at the bottom, some news and notes we could talk about. News and notes. To round out, round out the podcast. The first one here. It, well, the first two, one's probably not going to be as more sad. This one makes me sad, though. Huh? Ryan McKenna is a San Francisco Giant. Oh. No, hey. He's been with us for a while. Come on, be nice. Yeah, he, dude, he's been with us for a long time. Drafted in 2015, the Duquette era. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's surprising because you, you really think about it, there's not many people that Dan Duquette drafted that are still around. Yeah. Um, uh, that's just because yeah. it's bad. So, yeah, so we designated him for assignment because he had no more options, and the San Francisco Giants picked him up, yeah. which is kind of ironic, which is kind of weird because we did this uh, earlier this year, and he actually passed through waivers. Yeah. Right, so um, so nobody picked him up. I don't really. I guess the Giants are just that hurt. They lost their center fielder uh, for the full year. Um, the guy they got from the KBO, uh, Korea Baseball League. Um, I, yeah, so maybe they just need depth. They have to keep him up there, or we can he'll go back to waivers, and we I guess be able to have a chance to get him back if that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, still he he was an Oriole. I have I have a question for you. We got. I, I'm not sure if this was the last. I, I would have to. I'm pretty sure this is the last. Who is the last outfielder to be designated for assignment by the Orioles and claimed by the Giants? How did you look that up? I know this. Y- your wife used to be obsessed with him. No. Uh, uh-huh. uh, you no. Know, he had a triple against the Orioles with yeah, the Giants that year. People used to uh, yeah, like chant his name. Joey Bats. Not, well, not Matt. Not, not Joey Bats. No. Um, Joey. Joey. Oh, Joey. Oh, my God. What's Rickard? That? Joey Rickards. Joey yeah. Rickard. Yeah. Dude, I forgot about him. Yeah. No, because I remember he was, got, I figured he got DFA'd because I knew he was on the Giants. So I went to look up 2019. Man. I miss him. Wow. That's a guy that I totally forgot. Tell me Ryan McKenna isn't Joey Rickards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually. That's the same. <laughs> but yeah, no, I have some stats for Ryan McKenna as the, the lifetime Oriole so far. Let's just say he was killing it this year and eight at bats, hit a 342 OPS plus, 1.5 OPS. He didn't do much, but he had two home runs. Yeah. I have to see one of them. Yeah. Uh, but career, he's a 224 hitter and uh, 455 at bats for the Orioles. He's got uh, 45 RBIs, eight stolen bases, eight home runs. One of which was a walk off against the Mariners last year. I remember D- that. Tell me that McKenna's not the guy that when you get to the game and you see the lineup and you see McKenna in, in it, you're like, God sakes, who did he take out? Yeah, no, I, I did I did that uh, the first games I went, to, and then he hit a home run to shut me up. So. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, man, McCarron is playing no matter who it was. Yeah. That's not the guy that you wanted to see. He, yeah, I mean, he's been here for a while, so it's sad to see him go. Hopefully, I hope him success. Yeah, oh, yeah. Unless he plays the Orioles. Yeah, and then I'd be guys up for three. Yeah. Yeah. Ground, well, ground ball to shortstop. Yeah. No, I, strike out. No, I just trying to be nice. First pitch. First pitch. He's three. He only sees three. He saves their pitch count. Yeah, That okay, okay. How about, How about in, in, fly out to left field? And we intentionally walk him so it doesn't affect any pitch count. And then he just like stands in the middle, first and second, and gets tagged out. Okay. <laughs> My, mine was more realistic. <laughs> um, and then the next one, it's a little less sad for me. Mike Bauman's been DFA'd. And if I had to assume, it's going to be claimed. Yeah, he has to be claimed. I mean, he's still on 97 98. Uh, I don't know if it's like the most hittable 97 98 ever because it seems like it. I, I don't I, I don't know. Like you would see him just ninety eight yeah. missile off. Like I, I mean, you, you, with the thinking. white with the White Sox hurt from claiming him, like just paying the league paying the league minimum to throw yeah. a couple innings. He's gonna be the best closure in baseball for some team. You know what? And as long as we get Felix back by then. <laughs> but um, now he was also Dan Duquette era draft pick. Uh, was a former top pitching prospect in our system, and this year his stats. Surprisingly, aren't as bad this year and even last year. That I but the last few, he's been decent. Yeah, uh, the, he's done better this year. He had a three four four ERA in eighteen point one innings, uh, one hundred nine ERA plus, one point four WHIP, and even last year he had a three point seven six ERA in sixty four innings. Uh, really, what struggle he struggled in twenty one and twenty two, but he's going to be missed uh, not as much. It's just, um, well, the pro- the problem is, is he's, he's going to be missed not as I mean, much. I, I like McKenna more than him. Bauman, oh, is always, always, always going to do something. But, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard though. He was clearly, it, it was he was clearly the lowest guy in the bullpen. He had the least trust. He never really he wasn't even pitching that much. Yeah. So it's kind of I mean Grayson Rodriguez or Mike Bauman. Yeah. I still don't forgive him for what he did to us against the Mariners last year. Do you remember that game? Who Mike Bauman? Yeah. 
I don't remember. Oh, uh, you remember the Cedric game? Yes. Yeah, he's the one that gave up. The, Let him come right back. He he's the one that gave up the one that Cedric robbed, and then the next batter actually hit one. Yeah, and then Cedric. And then Cedric won the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, he he was doing so bad. I was begging Mike, uh, begging him to come out and Cedric go pitch. Right. Right. But um, he's gone now. So we'll, bye bye. Well, right. hey, hey, he might he might not he might pass the waivers and go to AAA. He might. I would be shocked. I would be if if, yeah, again, if, can the if White he, Sox or Rockies. If he passes two waivers, then everything Elijah's ever said about hating him is right, and that he's just trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, and then so next year. So next week on the podcast, yeah. Mike Bauman. <laughs> Mike ba- wait, Mike Bauman. <laughs> yeah. oh, be... There's there's certain players that we could not have on the podcast because either my hate for them or Cody's hate. Like I can guarantee you, Orioles fans, there's a a certain. Bench coach for the the San Diego Padres that'll never step foot on this podcast. Ryan Flaherty, I, I, I love him. He was terrible. I love him. He's was, he was not a good baseball player. He's probably a great coach though. Oh yeah, yeah, he seems like it, and he's probably a great person. Yeah, probably. You know. Um, and then so I have a question here that's just been floating around. Brandon Hyde's been talking about it a little bit. Uh, what do you think of a six man rotation? Okay. Um, I I like it. I, I mean, as long as we have a solid six. Yeah. Right. I, I I've heard uh, one of the ideas is I don't know if it's. A guarantee yet is that it's going to be a six man rotation for everybody except Burns. Burns is still going to pitch on no, five. And, and I, I think you could even bump that up. Like, I definitely think that's the right move because you want Burns to pitch as much as possible. Yeah. I think, I mean, because this is his last year with us. Yeah. So we might as well use him. Up. Use him. Up. Yeah. If he gets Tommy John next year, it doesn't matter. We're not going to have him. Yeah. That'd be the year we sign him to a seven year. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll be August. We sign him to a massive deal and his arm falls off. Yeah. He can't, he has to retire. <laughs> that <laughs> That's our luck. Yeah. We, Chris Davis. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> must have fell off. Yeah, mine's off. Mm. But yeah, so um, like I said, I don't mind it, um, as long as we have a solid six. Which put out. There. I think you would. I think you'd run Burns, G Rod, Bradish, Means, uh, Kramer, and Irvin. Yeah, and I think because what well, this is this is the main problem is if we're looking at our schedule in June, the end of May is not too bad because we got. One more one series away against the White Sox. Come back home against the Red Sox, and then we have an off day. That's our last off day, though, until June seventeenth. Huh. We play one, two, three, four, six series in a row, and let's just say they're not easy series. We play the Rays, Blue Jays, Rays, Braves, and Phillies. Mm. Oh, don't worry. After that off day, it's just just the Yankees, Astros, Guardians, and Rangers. And we lost to. The- St. Louis Cardinals. Don't worry. We'll get swept by the White Sox and then not lose a single game in the month of June. That's how we'll be somehow. Except to the Yankees. We'll get swept by them but beat everybody else. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I think the six-man rotation is definitely going to help. Uh, I'd be interested to see what they do with the bullpen. I'd almost... I'm almost interested to see, though, if it's a thing that, say, you have that last that last star spot's Irvin, maybe, and then, say, Kramer has a bad day, can only go three innings, you bring Irvin in a day early right. and have him try to be a bulk band, take four innings up, and then just go right to Burns next day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, and we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other issue is uh, Kate Povich is pitching amazing in yeah. Triple A right now. Um, like, uh, do you have his stats up? Uh, no, I don't there, have his stats up. He has I've a, just been watching him. He has a two oh eight ERA and forty seven and two thirds. I mean, man, uh, sixty five Ks, one oh five whip. Like, he is killing it. Yeah. The the, the only thing I don't want to happen there is that I don't. I think the worst thing you can do is bring him up and put him in the bullpen. I mean, that's uh, sorry to break it to you. Albert Suarez is not making our playoff bullpen. I Kate po- Kate will be our playoff. Bullpen. I almost guarantee it. I just don't want to DL Hall him. You know, I mean, it worked for us with DL Hall. It didn't work for the Brewers, but worked for us. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, Joey Ortiz is killing it. Yeah, he's Brewers, doing great, which is good, good for him. Yeah, he's doing great. But uh, and then another farm note I have here is Kobe Mayo, who sadly got injured. Yeah, um, crazy play, ran into the dugout and called a pop fly, but I think he fractured his ribs. Yep, mm-hmm. and that's just something that he's not going to need surgery for. Yeah, but it's just you need weeks to recover. Yeah, that's that's really all it is. It's going to take a couple weeks for him to recover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we have a guest joining us. Yeah, a dog. But um, yeah, it's gonna take a couple weeks, and he'll be back. It, it definitely pushes him back. At this may make him not be a Noriel at all this year. Yeah, maybe it, it, it at least till August. At, like it's gonna be, and the problem is by then you're trying to make that playoff push. Do we have room to bring up a rookie? Yeah, probably not. So it'll it'll be interesting how they play. I mean, 
it all depends. I don't know. We'll see. Just frustrating because yeah. I think he was the next guy. I yeah, I do too. I mean, um, Henry Norby. The, so one thing I want to go over really quick uh, too is I'm pretty impressed with Mateo right now. Yeah. Mateo's done a really good job over a second. Defensively amazing. It's like having. I mean, I was going to say it's like having two shortstops, but it is having two shortstops. Yeah. Um, the the way that he is able to uh, help Gunner. Yeah. You know, especially on balls out the middle and everything. Him and Gunnar had a cool foot play the other day. Um, they communicate well. But, too. yeah, but the biggest thing I'm saying is it's really making it so you're not missing Jackson too much right now. Yeah. Because Mateo's hitting decent. He's hitting enough. You know, and— More than enough. Yeah, and, I mean, more than—what's um, his name? Uh, our gold oh, third baseman. You're, you're, yeah, you're— is, Who I, I will give all credit to Hyde. Hyde likes to use everybody. Rias has barely been playing yeah. lately. And that's a— that's how it should be. Sat like I know you want to start him because he, he's got great defense, but when you can't hit the ball, you we have too many good infielders. Yeah, we well, can't bench Westberg. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah. So I uh, yeah I, I'm really happy with Jorge Mateo and how what he's been providing, um, especially because that's usually some you know some of the hate that uh, Orioles fans like to give is to him, but. I mean, my man, he plays at almost every position, so he's yeah. gonna be on our team. So you yeah, get like that. Him. That's like, I I would not be surprised if you see Jorge Mateo here in two years. Yeah, because yeah. if he if he keeps up what he does here, just average. He's an average offensive producer. He is at MLB average. That's enough. Yeah, with the speed that he brings, even if he's a deep bench bat, and you bring him in for pinch hits and defense. That's enough. Because I don't like you said he's playing great second base. He could play center field. Yeah. He can play shortstop. And I don't think people realize not just how hard it is to play multiple positions. Even though shortstop and second base are right next to each other, it's a completely different uh, position. Well, Every uh, everything's different. Yeah, especially footwork. I yeah. mean, you're pivoting on that right foot real hard um, and throwing across your body yeah. for most of the time. Um, really difficult. Um, but anyway, I mean, I'm just really impressed with him. Um, good. I bet. Yeah, he just seems like a great teammate too. Yeah. Um, I tell you another guy that I'm really impressed with right now is Austin Hayes, mm-hmm. uh, and the way he's as, like he's acting in that dugout and stuff. He's still a team leader. Yeah. Um. You know, it just seems like like Hayes, Mullins, Mateo, like they the threat is real, like of losing your spot, but it it's definitely winning first. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it seems like a really healthy. Yeah. And yeah, I I think our our like clubhouse is really really good right now. I definitely think the losing Bauman is going to take a hit to that because I yeah. think he was a big clubhouse guy, and that's the only thing that worries me going into the next few years. Is luckily you have all these young guys who are already like with Rutschman, Henderson, Kowser, Westbrook. They're all they already know all the young guys. But when you start losing the Mullins and Santander, they start yeah. in the next couple of years when they go out of ARB. If we don't resign them, I think it's you need the veteran leadership one. I just hope it's not too much of a culture shock to change it. Like, say, say for some reason we trade Mullins, I don't want that to cause us to go on a five game losing streak. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think that's the biggest worry right now as an Oriole. Yeah, I, I have a, a little before we uh, head off. I have a fun story. I, um, so in the Orioles dugout uh, at St. Louis, uh, there's a sign that says uh, "No water hoses in the dugout," right? And that it was put there by. Kyle Gibson yeah. as a joke, everybody. He was on our team last year. He was actually one of the founders of the of, uh, 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 of the, the, water, the, ho- the Homer Hose. Um, really funny. It was a nice interview on the other day uh, with Kyle Gibson, just talking about how yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, I do miss him. Like I don't, I, I, sadly, I, I don't miss him on the mound that much, even though he's doing good. Yeah. But like that's not why. I just feel like he was. A, Dude, no room like him. I would love for him to be put him as like a pitching issue. Oh yeah, that's like, it's, that was you. Make up some job for him. Yeah, man. yeah. He's the mound raker. Yeah, mound <laughs> raker. Right. Yeah, and we'll pay him. Yeah, but um, pay him league minimum to sit on the IL and just be in the dugout. Right. Yeah. So, but that was pretty funny. I uh, yeah. love to see that. Um, and um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I hope uh, next time we talk to everybody that. Uh, we have good news about the St. Louis Cardinals series. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, boy, I hope so. But, um, but yeah, guys. Until then, it was great seeing you. Yeah. Um, we definitely hope you enjoyed our uh, podcast today, and uh, definitely hope you can um, come see us next week um, here on the Utah Street yeah. Banter. Please definitely make sure you follow us and on all of our social media sites. We have Facebook, X, Instagram. Uh, we're on YouTube. YouTube. Um, at Spotify, yeah, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure you, uh, if on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and YouTube, like us, follow us, 
give us a five star review um, it, on social media. DM us, message yeah. us with any questions, any topics you want us to bring up. We'll anything you reach out to us, we'll definitely mention it on yeah, there. We'll definitely try to. And um, but until then, it's great seeing everybody. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Yep. See ya. See you guys.